I've told everybody throughout my entire life, if you see me driving an electric car, shoot me in the head. Put it right behind my ear, angle it up a little bit, and pull the trigger so you get a good shot at it, right? Meet Alan Meehan. He is one of what is sometimes called the Mopar faithful, people who are deeply devoted to all things Chrysler. It doesn't take much to get it going 100. Dodge, which is one of 14 brands owned by Euro-American giant Stellantis, makes the biggest, most fuel-thirsty American muscle cars you can buy. But it is replacing its Challenger and Charger models with at least one all-electric vehicle. Hope is to retain the magic of its muscle cars in an EV form. At first glance, the company could risk losing some die-hard fans like Mian but even some of them may be coming around. I read this article the other day, and man, I really like that car. I said it out loud, right? I really do like that car. While they are a small share of total sales for Stellantis, leaning into American muscle and performance has brought Dodge success in many diehard fans. But tightening emissions regulations and a shift toward SUVs are making it hard to keep producing gas-guzzling sports cars. Our transition to electrification is really critical. I mean, this is like really walking a tightrope for us. This car, I want to keep it exactly like it is. I mean, I don't want to change one thing about this car. This is how it came like my Hemi Cuda, that's a clone car, and I put that together so I wouldn't wreck the good cars because I like to get on the cars, I like to drive them, ride them, have fun with them, do some burnouts, that kind of thing. And I wouldn't do that with these cars. These are, these are collectible cars. In his airplane hangar outside Minneapolis, Minnesota, Alan Meehan has several Dodges and some classic Plymouths. Not too far away, Greg Nelson is another Mopar believer. He buys, fixes, stores, and sells classic cars mostly Plymouths and Dodges. That one only has 19 miles on it. That's the only car I don't drive. Because the guy before me didn't drive it. I said, you wrecked it now, now I can't drive it. But I knew it was one of 20 and I had to have it. He calls this place the Mopar Ponderosa. I built this to have a hangout for my stuff. And then, of course, other people wanted to have their car fixed here or find them a car. And it just keeps going and going and that's it. This is one of three or four black Challenger convertibles of the red interior. And you know, it's probably a $125,000 car today. Would I sell it? No. This Cuda is worth $600,000. $600,000 car? They only made 19 of them. This one is more than a million. A million five would buy it, I guess, but it's the only one. For collectors and enthusiasts like Mian and Nelson, Mopars are just different from everything else. It's the devil including rivals made by Ford and General Motors. They made some of the most daring cars of the muscle car era. It is the dust trail from the Roadrunner. Push the horn. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Factory, that's all it was. Mopar just did all the wild, crazy stuff. And so look at today, it's the same thing. They've been the leader in the crazy cars and colors. You just gravitate to that uniqueness. When I think of Dodge, I think of power and I think of styling. They're always thinking out of the box. I just love the stuff they come up with. Dodge made all kinds of cars over the decades. Pickup trucks, minivans, and full-size sedans. Trucks sold today under the Ram Trucks brand were originally branded as the Dodge Ram. Dodge revived the Charger name in 2006 and the Challenger in 2008. Mian has an SRT8 Challenger from that first model year. We drive this thing all over the place. It's been to Phoenix twice. We just drove it up northern Minnesota. It dug deeper into that brand identity shortly after Chrysler emerged from bankruptcy in the financial crisis. About a decade ago, we decided that we were going to distill the brand down to its performance essence. And the brand is all about American muscle and performance. Then in 2015, it debuted the Hellcat Challenger. Mian has one of those as well. These cars are second to none for engineering. They're just great cars to drive. They're powerful. They're, they're light-footed. They stop well. They handle well. Dodge is known for its monster engines. 
The Hellcat comes with 707 horsepower. A version called the Hellcat Red Eye kicked that up to 797 horsepower. The Red Eyes, my God, you floor that thing and in two seconds you're going 100. But the most powerful of the bunch was the Dodge Demon, a very limited version of the Challenger that came with 840 horsepower. The Demon was for a time the quickest production car in the world. It could go 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds and run the quarter mile in 9.65 seconds. Meehan and Nelson each have one. No car had even been close to that. Typically it was a drag car to do that. And this is a street car you could buy and you got a, you got a warranty and everything. The Demon's ragged power, man. That thing is something else. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. A list of things you have to sign and initial when you buy the car to make sure you know what you're getting, it's really something. The only car in the world to do a wheelie, right? From the factory. The Demon was a limited run vehicle, but the Hellcat surpassed Dodge's sales expectations. By the time the car goes out of production, Dodge expects to sell 80,000 of them. The Challenger inspires special loyalty. IHS Market released a survey of customer loyalty to various manufacturers and makes. Mopar vehicles took top honors in several categories. Among them was the Dodge Challenger in the sports car category, even though the Challenger is built on a full-size sedan platform and is much larger than most other sports cars. Since 2020, Dodge has also topped J.D. Power's Appeal survey, which measures the emotional connection consumers have with cars and brands. While Dodge has become known for supercharged V8 engines, environmental laws are proving them pricey. What we said very early on was, we have two choices. We can either say, look, we can't make this transition because we see where the industry is going. We can shut down the brand, or we could look at it and say, is there something that we can do here to really have the same playbook that we created about a decade ago the challenge is that the auto market, EV or otherwise, has shifted away from traditional sedans and sport cars and toward crossovers and sport utility vehicles. As for Dodge, the company has long sold the Durango and recently debuted the Hornet small SUV, but its muscle cars and sports cars are its identity. We've really built this brand on the backs of some of those extreme performance vehicles. Hellcats, Red Eyes, Demons, the Scat Packs really is our biggest seller. All of them are very aggressive performance vehicles. Muscle car is not supposed to look like a melted jelly bean. It's supposed to look like a big, blocky American performance vehicle. There are other obstacles to electrifying Dodge. Fans adore the unmistakable rumble of a V8 engine. To get consumers involved and excited, you really need to, to connect to that emotional level. And it goes beyond the fact that Tesla or Lucid or fill in the blank can go zero to 60 in two seconds. Dodge built the Charger EV with this driving experience in mind. The vehicle has a shiftable transmission and a simulated engine note Dodge has said will be above 100 decibels. Both of these innovations are controversial. I have heard some pushback from some folks who say that it's akin to the turn of the century in the 1900s when cars had fake horse heads attached to the front of it so folks could more easily switch away from horse-driven car carriages and it wouldn't spook horses. Certainly some people are saying, oh, that's fake noise, and, and how can that be real, and how can that be useful? We don't know everything about it yet. I mean, Dad just said that it's real noise. It's air going through baffles, and it's not a piped-in MP3 file that's, that's pushed into your computer. To be fair, a lot of cars already come with manipulated sound, even fuel-burning ones. An electric motor makes a very high, whiny, pitchy noise. And the challenge that Dodge is trying to work through is that sound is definitely a part of that experience. While other EVs are focused on keeping quiet, we amplified ours. It's a part of a visceral sports car experience. And so what does that look like in the future? And, and what is the right sound? I'd have to hear it again, but what I heard was, well, that's interesting, I don't know. Yeah. Nothing sounds like these cars. I love the way these things sound. The shiftable transmission is a slightly different issue. 
Transmissions are needed to manage the power from a gas-burning engine. Electric vehicles work differently, so multiple gears aren't needed. The vast majority of EVs have only one gear, including high-performance ones like Tesla's. There are exceptions. The Porsche Taycan has a two-speed transmission, and Formula E race cars have multiple gears. I think a step in the right direction for them is it's got to shift. I don't want to just get in the car and you know push down the accelerator and have it, the power be linear. I don't want that at all. I want it like this. I want to be able to shift it and have some fun with it. I'm really excited that engineers are looking at these solutions. I think that that's something that we haven't been looking at as closely in general as the industry because the transition to electric vehicles is so complicated and there's so many things to deal with. A vehicle inspired by the SRT Charger EV concept will enter production in 2024, the year after production of the current Challenger and Charger ends. I'm not going to say I didn't get my fair share of hate mail from some enthusiasts. I absolutely did. And we looked at what the negative sentiment was out in our customer base on this transition. And it was high. It was very high. We knew that our customer base, 13 million strong, are going to need soak time. They're going to need time to make this transition in their mind to electrification. We didn't ask for the rules to change. We didn't want them to change, but they did. And we can try to outrun them, but that would be a nine second pass straight into extinction. Dodge launched a two year business plan with scheduled quarterly updates to keep customers informed. That includes the Speed Week event in August 2022, where it unveiled both the Hornet and the Charger EV. There were about 20 million people watching the three-day event. Tracking social media posts and mentions, Dodge found negative sentiment about the Charger EV was initially high, but it dropped over the course of three days, eventually settling below 50%. Uh, trust me, this is not the EV that they want you to have. This is the way Dodge does EVs. What was interesting to me was not the fact that we were over 50% positive, it was the fact that it got better and better and better each day as they learn more and more and more. Nelson and Mian are at least open to trying out the new car. I think it's a cool looking car and I want one because I want to have the first, you know, one of the first ones, but uh, I don't know. You got to drive it and test it out and see if you like it, but I guess if electricity stays super cheap, then maybe I drive one, but this is more fun. It just is. It makes noise, it scares you. Some analysts wonder if Dodge wouldn't be better off trying to attract a new audience of core EV buyers. This brand in Stellantis is stable is the most exposed to the millennial audience and millennials are the customer segment that wants EVs the most. And so this is an opportunity to make a true EV, kind of what the Ford Mach-E did. You know, that's more EV than it is a Mustang and it's done exceptionally well and targeted a new audience. Of total Stellantis vehicles sold, RBC estimates Ram makes up 10% and Jeep makes up 19%. Dodge only contributes about 6%. Stellantis is kind of late to the game, especially compared to probably its most often compared peers, Volkswagen and Renault. And so it's gonna be a really expensive undertaking to electrify Battery costs are actually going up. While EVs get more expensive near term, Stellantis has to support all these disparate brands. There, there really isn't a cohesive strategy of why you need all of these brands. In the meantime, fans of what might be the last era of the V8-powered performance car are making their peace with its end. They're going to discontinue the gas-powered V8 engines, is the way I understand it. And uh, being a Mopar and a Hemi guy, I'm, I'm sad to see that. I'm sad to see them go. I don't know. I, I still think these will be more fun than electric car, but that's what they're going to build, I guess. It's always better to have things greener and better, but you got to be practical about it. In the meantime, I'll drive this stuff. Even at 10 bucks a gallon, I'm still going to buy gas. Oh, I'm crazy, I guess, about cars somewhat, but I'm not crazy. Living the dream? Or your dream. Uh, I don't know, I'll just, I got more cars to buy. We're not done yet, I don't think. <laughs>